Hey, what's up everybody? Danny Lightning back with a Rush Rally 3 video, and this is my guide to this game. When I first started playing, there wasn't really anything about this game at all that I could find. I didn't know what cars to buy, I didn't know how to earn credits quickly, and all that good stuff. So I'm going to go every, over everything that I feel is very important. First off, how to earn credits as quickly as possible. You can see here we have career, rally cross, single rally, single uh, whatever. Rally cross races, these pay out the most credits. For some reason these actually have a double payout. I can usually get between 1,500 and like 3,500 credits per race by winning if you come in first on these rally cross races. Of course, of course the further you get into this the more they pay out but when you start off I'm pretty sure you were getting around 1500 credits per race. Now like if you go into the career and do the rally racing you're lucky to get 600 credits per race. Sometimes you're probably going to get 300 to 800 a race basically. So rally cross racing really really pays out good. Now as far as cars go which cars should you buy? Well let's go look at that. There's actually four cars in this game that really 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 stand out above the rest. And one thing that's nice is when you get one of these cars, you can put upgrades into it. So you can make it a lower class car or a higher class car. Like I've got, I've got this Subaru and it's currently a class R, but I can bring that all the way back down to a class D so it can even compete in the lower end racing. But when you first start off, you have two choices of cars to buy. You can either buy the Swifty Compact SZ-R or... You can buy the City Saxon VTS. I chose this one and this is a really nice car. I upgraded this from class D to class B. So this is my this is my advice. Alright, buy this car, do as many rally cross races as you can, get this up to a class B, and then farm then save all the credits you farm to buy the next car. So you're gonna buy one of two different cars next. You're either going to get this guy right here, which is the Micro Club R64. Alright, I test drove this, and I test drove the next car. I don't even know how many times. These are both amazing cars. So you're either going to get this guy or this guy. I almost think the other one drives a little bit better, but I went with this just because I like this Ford Escort. This is a great driving car. I've got this upgraded to a Class S. Alright, so after I got this up to Class S, now it was time to save up for my next car. And again, there's two cars that are really, really good that you can choose from. So you're either going to save up to buy this Subaru, which I think this is the best driving car in the game. And when I bought this, it was a Class S. It was only missing three or four of the engine upgrades. Everything else came completely upgraded. I do not regret getting this car. Or you're going to want to get this guy right here, the Auto Special All-Wheel Drive. This this drives a little different. This one sticks to the road a little more. I think the Subaru, Subaru slides a little more. I like the way the Subaru can slide around corners. It just feels smoother to me overall. But I still can't decide which one of these drives best. Now don't buy this thing. This thing is all over the road. Some of these cars drive terrible. Some cars are just almost impossible to keep on the road. And this has got to be the worst one out of all of them. Do not buy the Skylight Saloon RS. Now the most expensive car in the game. This is also a really nice driving car. But I feel it drives a little too sloppy. This one comes in at class R to start off with. So I'm pretty sure this is completely full on the upgrades. When you buy this I think it's fully upgraded. I could be wrong, but I just, I don't like this one as much. All right, so those are my recommendations on cars. Um, we're going to go look at, like, the upgrades and all that stuff right now. So there's different stuff you can do. You can customize the car where you can change all the stickers out. You can change the color of these stickers. So basically, you can design the liveries for your cars. Next, you're going to have paint. All right, you can change the body, wheel, and mud flaps color. Next, you're going to have wheels. You can buy all these different wheels. They don't actually do anything except for change the way the wheels look. 
Next we've got tuning. This gets a little bit complicated. I've noticed I've never found a track where I've hit more than 120 miles per hour. So I've moved, I move my final drives down somewhere between 110 and 120 miles per hour. That gives the car a little less top speed, but it will make this car accelerate a little bit faster. The brake bias, I just leave that alone. Now when it comes to ride height and suspension, I pretty much leave this alone, but I found out if the car is, seems to be if the car seems to be oversteering, I would actually boost the spring stiffness up a little bit. If the car is understeering, I would probably lower the stiffness a little bit. Besides that, I've been playing with the uh, tuning on this stuff, and it's very hard to get it to drive right. But the spring stiffness can come in very handy, depending on if your car is over or under steering. So you can do the front and rear suspension, and then you've got the wheels. I haven't really messed with anything on here except for wheel size, and I find that just leaving it stock is just fine. Now let's look at our upgrades. You've got your engine upgrades. All right, most of these have a stage one, stage two, and stage three. Some of them have like a four stage part, like this displacement has stock, stage one, two, and three. I guess I said that wrong. You got stock, stage one, and stage two on most of these cars. Some of them go up to stage three. Now, if you were to put everything back to stock, this car is going to go all the way back down to a class D car, so I can run this in the lower end of vents, or I can put this, keep this completely upgraded to a Class R and run it in the higher end of vents. Okay, you've got your handling. you got a couple upgrades in here. And then you've got your drivetrain. Now one thing is most of these cars come with a weird ratio. I always like to put them to 50-50. So the front and rear wheels have equal amounts of power. A 50-50 car should handle better in real life. Alright, in real life, a car with 50-50 will handle better than a car that has more of the uh, handling onto the front wheels. And it seems, even on the game, it seems to handle better with the 50-50. So I always choose the 50-50. So I think that pretty much covers most of the basics. Let's go ahead and do a couple races. We're going to do one rally cross, and then we'll go into the regular racing. Rally cross, you race against other people. And on the regular rally races, you don't. Okay, one thing first, real quick, graphic settings. When you go to graphics, see where it says auto detect quality? Make sure you do that because, like, my phone's not so great. My graphics are turned down a little bit because this phone cannot even come close to handling this game on full graphics. If I have everything on high and up to the best possible, my phone lags like you would not believe. So do that auto detect your graphics. It'll put your phone at the highest graphics setting and keep you can have without any lag. All right, hopefully my screen recorder is not going to cause this game to lag. Um, let's see in here. You can change the pedals. You can change some of this around a little bit if you want to. Pretty much everything else is pretty expl self-explanatory. So let's go ahead and do a rally cross race. Let's see, I'm in a car that's set up for a Class R, so I'm going to go ahead and find the first Class R race. Let's go race this one. Now, there is one specific view that I like. I find that the, uh, it's not the cockpit view, but the view where you're, it's like the cockpit, but you're looking at the hood. That is probably the easiest view to race in. The cockpit view is the most fun, but it's a lot harder. Alright, so this view seems to be the one where I do the best. It's very hard to pass these cars because they like to make so you slam right into the back of them. And I can feel that lag. This screen recorder is causing me to lag a little bit. I really do need to get a better phone one of these days. And there I made a really bad turn. These guys do like to bash into you and try to knock you off the road. They do it all the time, plus I'm getting a little bit of lag, so that's making this really hard to drive. I probably should have lowered the graphics a little bit before I start up my screen recorder. 
it's not just just this game though I have a really cheap phone and the rescre screen recorder makes most games end up lagging most of the videos I make on my PC on an Android emulator but for some reason this game will not work on my emulator So I kind of got to get used to the little bit of lag because all the controls feel slightly delayed. Alright, I'm in first place. Let's see if I can stay there. Probably not, but we'll find out what happens. I think this particular race pays out like 3,500 credits or something. This is a Class R race, so you do need a car that's Class R to participate in the higher earning races. Oh, someone just bashed me again and tried to knock me off the road. Like I said, they do that all the time. And if you don't recover from it, right, you just go off the road and then you're way behind. Like I said, it's, it's so hard to overtake cars because they always try and run into you. It's like they intentionally run into you or they ten intentionally swerve in front of you so you bash into the rear of them so you can't pass them. It's kind of crazy. But these rally cross races, it's, it's a lot easier to come in first place on one of these than the regular rally races. Now, the regular rally races, you're on the track by yourself. You're not going against other cars. You're just basically racing the clock. Now, the rally cross, you're up against other cars. Someone just bashed into the rear end of me again. And again. Yeah, without this, if this wasn't lagging, I would probably be in first place right now, but the lag's really making this a lot harder to drive. See what I mean? They don't want to let you, they don't want you to get in front of them. Alright, so I came in second place. That's not too bad. There I got a payout of 1,500 credits plus a second payout of 585. So I just got a little over 2,000 credits for that one race. Now let's go into the career and play a normal rally race. Alright, let's go to career. We're going to go ahead and pick the class R races because that's, I can't do any lower ones since this car is currently set to Class R. Alright, so here we go. This is all it is with a normal rally racing. Some of these tracks actually get really hard. Some of them are pretty easy. This is a nice track here. I like this track. Oh man, that lag is getting me right there. You can probably even see that lag. It only does that because my phone is junk and I'm running the screen recorder. I probably should turn the graphics down even lower before I started running the screen recorder. Four left, 
Oh man. There I had to use the e-brake. And there it didn't seem to respond to my controls. And let's see what place I came in. Probably about 10th or 12th. 17th! Alright, that lag really slowed me down. I usually come in around 10th place or so. But anyways, that pretty much sums up this review. I hope it helps. And I'll catch you guys later.